Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Daniel John here, and in today's video, we're going to be cutting melamine or chip, white chipboard shelving. Um, we're just going to show you the proper way to cut it and the tools that you'll need. There's a couple of options with the tools you can use a fine toothed handsaw or a circular saw. So it's up to you. So uh, this is the way that I've always cut it over the years anyway. So when you're measuring it, some people say measure twice, cut once. What I tend to do is make a mark at the top and the bottom. This is 47 inches, my shelf, and then I put one in the middle. What I always do, and it does help, is with a Stanley knife, utility knife, just join your lines up and score down. There, so you've got a scored line. What that does, that helps your blade to stay in track even if you're cutting it by hand um, and you get a nice straight edge. What we also do is pop some tape all the way around it like a bandage. That stops, uh, should do, stops too much flaking of this stuff because it's only glued on it, will lift off, it's quite thin stuff. The other thing I would say to you is patience and just go a little bit slow with your saw whether it's a hand saw or anything else and ideally support this end as well with something the bit that you don't want so it doesn't snap when it breaks we've got that covered in a minute so what you need to do this you need a tape measure not specifically this one but a marker pen a sharpie some tape to stop it or masking tape masking tape if you've got it the only advantage with um, using sellotape is when you've done your score line, you can see it. It basically just stops the wood, the yeah, the laminate on top from chipping. You need a T square to join your dots up, or a straight edge. A straight edge. We've got a clampable straight edge. You can get them, but now, if you're going to do it by hand, score it, tape it, and saw it slowly, and support both ends. If you can use a mechanical saw, electrical, battery operated. Uh, position your zero there with the line, one end, and then measure it and position it the other end so they're the same length from that end. Now, we're fortunate to have one of these uh, clamps, I can't even remember what they call it, I had it so long. But if you haven't, a couple of these would work, they're worth having in your toolbox. So it's just a straight edge and a couple of Irwin uh, that could be a piece. Clamps. That could be a piece of wood, just clamping A piece of on. straight wood, it has to be a piece of straight wood as yeah, well. Yeah, and that, that's really it. So I'm going to cut this now, but I'm not going to rush it. Uh, thing to remember with the circular saw is don't go straight onto it like that. Pull back a bit and let the blade spin up. corner on the box so it doesn't all fall off. Do you want me to support that? No, I'm fine. Pull it back. A bit of weight on that. A bit of weight on that. Remember these are dangerous things, be very careful with them. Always wear eye protection. Yeah, now, even when we've gone real slow, and I mean real slow, we've still got a bit coming bit off. Of shipping, yeah. Now, sometimes what you find is the bottom hasn't chipped at all, or is far worse. The easiest way to sort this out. So, the bottom's not too bad. It's just to run a little bit of sandpaper along the edge, just to finish it off. Um, and that makes a big difference. But you can also there. get, you can, to be honest, you, you can also get fine tooth blade circular saw. 
the circular saw, can't you? You can. Circular saw, fine tooth blade, please. <laughs> Which we've actually used when we were cutting our IKEA cabinet fronts, and that works really, really well, didn't it? Do you remember that? Oh yeah. That yeah, was well. that was no chipping whatsoever. So if you watch our video, you see we fit in an IKEA kitchen, and and they were gloss gloss front cabinets, and yeah. you couldn't really. I'm only using a standard blade on the saw, but if you just do that. You can see that improves the look already. Yeah. <coughs> let, let me let you into a little secret as well. Something they don't want you to know. How do you disguise these little bits here? Right, my friends, tip hex. Sorted, seriously, just some tip hex. Along, along that edge. But you can see how that looks better. A little bit there, but I'll just put some tip hex on there. Depends what you're using this yeah. for. If you're putting like trim bits or whatever, you're, you know, there's a lot of ways you can fix things. Yeah. And you, you've got to remember, it looks it looks better already. To be yeah, honest, you've got to remember that this is the cheaper end of the, the what board. you want to call it, yeah. particulate board, yeah. for mica, whatever it's it basically is. called. It's it's um it's a shelf. What did I say it was? Melamine. Melamine. It's melamine, but it's like a chip. It's like a chipboard. You can see it. Yeah. It's just it's air, air and glue basically. It's basically it's just glue with bits of wood. Thin, uh, like laminate on top. Laminate, white matte laminate. finish on this one. Yeah. You can get a gloss. Yeah. You've got some gloss ones. You can get gloss <coughs> ones. Yeah. It's nice. Anyway, I hope that helps you get a reasonable finish on uh, your melamine. But you might be unsure how to cut this stuff, and this is sort of the way you cut it. If you're not confident with the circular saw, personally, just get a little uh, hand saw, very small fine tooth hand saw. If you search, say, on screw fix or tool station, fine tooth hand saw, and score it with a line, that might be a lot better for you. It's more manageable. Some people are not confident with power tools, which is fair enough, because they are, can be nasty. Anyway, if this has helped you uh, cut your shells, if you could help us along a bit and subscribe, we'd just like to press the button please. Thanks for watching.